and welcome to the Eclipse Awards edition of And They're Off. This year's awards ceremony had jugglers, Las Vegas style dancers, laser light shows, a sound system that didn't work, video highlights that were out of sync with the audio, and voters that were absentee from their senses. In other words, just another typical year at the Eclipse Awards. Steve Haskin, you get to vent first on the Eclipse Awards. Take it away. I'm happy to say I didn't watch the show. I have nothing against the show. They can have the show all day, every year and have their awards and, and whatever, but I just, I'm sorry, I just don't watch it anymore. Uh, but I will criticize some of the people who voted like they don't give a hoot. <laughs> and I, I, will, I, I will let you have the honor of, uh, of mentioning one in particular after, uh, after I'm finished. But what I will say is this, okay? Look, Wise Dan is a very good horse. And he was a unanimous selection for Horse of the Year. Everybody loves him. Um, and we need horses like that around. I, however, still feel very adamant that I'll have another as a Horse of the Year. But listen, that's the way it goes. But what I don't understand is older male over Fort Larned. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, we're talking about Dr. Fager here. I mean, three Eclipse Awards, he's a mile grass horse. But listen, what do I know, right? Well, uh, you know, just, you know just, history and tradition and precedent, which, which nobody cares about anymore. So there you go. Uh, I don't know. Uh, listen, everybody has their own opinions about things. But uh, why, don't you, uh, why don't you talk about some of the, uh, <laughs> some of the other votes uh, <laughs> that stood out on the ballot? Yeah. You know, the problem with this is I don't think there's any clear cut purpose to, to why people vote for certain horses. Is it the best horse? Is it a popularity contest? You know, nobody knows what they're voting for. But I do have a plan to, to immediately improve the voting. Uh, that is, number one, bar for life, the person who voted for Frankel as North America's Horse of the Year. Uh, okay, ju just do not send this person a ballot for the remainder of their natural life. Okay, you have to be a moron not to get the concept of what North America Horse of the Year is, okay? You can also bar for life the people who voted for Bodie Meister, the lumber guy, and painter as champion three-year-old male. I mean, what does all have another have to do, okay? He's beaten all of these horses. Well, maybe not Painter, but Pan Painter won one. No, he did. Race. No, he. Wait a second. He did beat Painter oh, in the right. Santa Anita Derby. Okay, he beat all of them. I, I mean, what what do people think? These are all good horses. Like you said, you can't put down Wisden. You can't put down Bodie. My, these are great horses. These are horses that got beat. By I'll have another. How the hell do you, do you vote what for about the horses the lumber guy? that got what about beat? The, the lumber guy. The lumber, the lumber guy didn't guy. even get champion sprinter. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, uh, the that, lumber that guy. Was so a hell you of voted a vote. for the lumber guy. Yeah, you vote for the lumber <laughs> guy who could, couldn't even win the sprint, but you're going to vote for him for champion three-year-old male uh, against the horse who won two classics and was undefeated in, in four stakes races, three of them grade one. Okay, just get rid of those people, and, and you'll immediately have an improved voting system. All right, it's enough. It's too early to get worked up, Steve. Well, you're the one that put the Eclipse Awards first. <laughs> hey, thanks. Thank, thanks for tossing me up. Now you got us, you got, we, we got both of us all worked up yeah. now. All right. Let, let's take a break. Let somebody else step in here. Steve, it's two for blue. A bluey sant. Yes, a bluey sant, whose name I just love pronouncing and actually have finally gotten it right, won her second straight race when she took an allowance test at Santa Anita last week. Joining us now to talk about the Zenyatta sister is the trainer of both gargantuan fillies, Mr. John Sheriffs. John, welcome to And They're Off. Hi, hey, Lenny, good to be here. All right. Or there. I talked to Don Robinson, who, who fold and, of course, raised both Zenyatta and a blue Assant. Uh, he was saying that uh, he thought of Louis Sant was, was incredibly advanced mentally as, as a youngster. Um, can you speak to that? One of the interesting things uh, is that um, when she first came in, uh, Mickey Prager broke her in North Carolina or South Carolina, I'm not sure. But anyway, 
you know, she could go in front of a horse, she could go in behind a horse, she could go alongside of a horse, she could go in between horses. And um, interesting, when she came here, we did so much of that, she got really confused that she didn't know whether she was supposed to be behind and front and side, right? So just her basic personality was, was that you could do all these things with her, but then she became somewhat confused about it all and didn't understand you know, exactly what we wanted of her. So that was that was part of her being smart, and then it turned out to be, oh, we have to relearn all this kind of stuff. I was talking to Eric Kronfeld, her owner, and, and saying, you know, that she's got, he came out and saw her a few times, and you could watch her gallop around the track, and she just had this big, huge stride, and she could just cover the ground very easily. But that's just covering the ground, because for a horse to be successful, they have to lay their body down a little bit, you know. They have to extend. They have to. They have to almost feel a purpose in in beating the horse next to them. So, because of her her talent, it took a long time for her to get the idea that you know this is a race and you have to pass the horse in front of you. I mean, you feeling pressure to have her sister who looks so much like her, who runs so much like her. You know, in, in the beginning, it was great. Here is. Uh, Here's a like a part of Zenyatta still in the barn, you know. As I look down, she's in Zenyatta's old stall. She's got the big ears like Zenyatta, and she's always got her head out looking around. So, you know, that was really fun. In, in some regards, it was like Zenyatta never left the barn. But then, you know, eventually she has to run. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then this hopefully do well. So suddenly, you know, it, it's not like, you're just leading a blue son over there, you know. It's like, oh, you're leading a blue son who is Zenyatta's half sister. So yeah, it comes a little bit more. Uh, John, how do you, I mean, besides the fact that you're probably going to have trouble filling an allowance that she's entered in from now on, but how, how do you make the decision, you know, when to jump her into a graded company? Is it, uh, is it a gut feeling? Is it an educated guess? Uh, is it the owners uh, having input? It's a real big jump. Uh, how, how do you go about making that decision? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's obviously the owner's uh, owner. Mr. Cromfeld has a lot, will have a lot to say about that. I will obviously advise him about it as much as I can. Um, and then, of course, it's the uh, opportunities to run. You know, you, the horse will never develop in the stall. You yeah. know, they have to get in the starting gate to develop one way or another. So, you know, you, you try to do it in nice, easy steps. But if it's not possible, it's not possible because, you know, they just have to run. But by the way, John, just quickly, I just wanted to ask you, how many, uh, how many, how many different pronunciations of her name have you heard so far? <laughs> Well, you know, it's a kind of a lonely spot up here at the at the corner of Hollywood Park. So um, I, I've heard a few, but, uh, you know, I was really lucky because um, I have a French writer here who explained exactly how to pronounce it. So it's, it becomes very simple. So uh, whenever anybody starts to say her name, I usually stop them and say, no, this is how it's pronounced. And, and how, how is it, John? Give, give, us the, give us the correct pronunciation. All right. Great. I'm glad you asked me that. So. The E becomes an A, so it's A, blue. The I becomes an E, so it's A, blue, E, font, and you don't pronounce the final E in it. So it makes it very simple. Fascinating. Very, nice. very nicely done. Very yeah, thank well. Jeez, well, John, bilingual. <laughs> I, I told you I've done it many times. <laughs> <laughs> who, who would have thought? That's amazing. John... <laughs> Best of luck with her wherever she shows up next, and uh, thanks a lot for stopping in with us today. Okay. Bye, Steve. Bye-bye, John. Take care. Steve, uh, a Bluey Sant isn't the only notable uh, runner in the sheriff's barn right now. Uh, why don't you tell us about that uh, three-year-old uh, male he's got? Yes, I do want to point out a three-year-old that hopefully will be a major factor on the Derby Trail that John has named Omega Star. So remember that name. He looked awesome breaking his maiden last month. He showed class, he showed brilliance, he showed professionalism. I love everything about this race. You know, he's by Candy Ride, he's out of a Fusaichi Pegasus mare, and he, he's got that big, long, beautiful stride that actually Fusaichi Pegasus had. Um, and he had only one start going into this race, 
and he ran second at Aqueduct when he was trained by Jimmy Jerkins. And the horse that beat him was a horse called Clawback, who came back and won Monday's Jimmy Winkfield stakes at Aqueduct in 109 and 3. So this horse finished second to a very good horse, came back, broke his maiden beautifully, yeah. and is only going to get better as they stretch out. So watch out for Omega Star. Yes, and good luck to the owners, Marty Wygod and Herman Sarkowski. Mr. Sarkowski, of course, the owner of my favorite all-time Philly phone shatter. So good luck to them and John Sheriffs and Omega Star. And that, go back and watch that race from December 31st. That is an impressive win by Omega Star. Steve, the three-year-olds are rolling out, and uh, what an impressive run we had from Oxbow in the LeCompte at Fairgrounds the other day. Double-digit lengths winner for four-time Kentucky Derby winning trainer and legend D. Wayne Lucas. Steve, Wayne certainly was in mid-season form after that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, D. Wayne is back on the Derby Trail. And he, let's remember, he also won the Smarty Jones Stakes yes. at Oaklawn on yes. Monday with yes. a horse called Will Take Charge. Yes, he did. So he's got a double barrel assault already. But Oxbow looks like he could be any kind. He also was very, very impressive. And listen, if you're a fan of Painter, speaking of Painter, yeah. you're going to love the fact that both Painter and Oxbow are by Austin McGann out of full sisters. And not only that, but their two dams are also full sisters to Tisnow and Bud Royale. So they're all, uh, the whole family is out of C's song. So this horse is definitely going to be one to watch. And speaking of D. Wayne, <laughs> I, have to re I have to read this quote <laughs> from him after the LeCompte, okay? Quote, you guys, meaning the media, didn't even know he was in the race, did you? If you had to make a living handicapping, you'd all starve to death. I am so glad to see D. Wayne hasn't changed in his old age. He's been insulting the media for as long as I can remember. Uh, he, and, and you know what? I love it. He once called the media cockroaches. You know, we, listen, we've had a lot of fun with Wayne over the years, and there's been no trainer that's been more media friendly. So it's just good to see that that Wayne has still got that old, that same old spunk, and I uh, can't wait, can't wait to get him back on the Derby Trail again, so we can get some more insults. Yeah, yeah, that's great stuff. We always look forward to Wayne being in the Derby. He actually was there with Optimizer last year, but uh, hey, if Wayne knew this horse was so great, Steve, do you think he? He himself may have made the trip from Hot Springs over to Fairgrounds. To, I know to that's watch what made the, the quote. That's what, that's what made the quote. When he says, <laughs> when he's talking about, when he's talking about the media, who is he talking to? He's talking to somebody from the from the from the uh, publicity department over the phone. I mean, I mean. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, Wayne Lo knows how to celebrate a victory, for sure. Yeah, if Wayne knew this horse was going to win by 11 lengths, I suspect he may, he may have made the trip over there to see it, but uh, who Listen, knows. Listen, I, I remember going all the way back when he did that with, uh, with Thunder Gold. Do you remember the, the year yeah. he had three horses yeah. in the Derby that year? Yeah. And he had Serena Song, and he had Timber Country. And when, Th when Thunder Gold won, he just le leveled into the media saying, well, nobody asked about Thunder Gold. No, you, you guys never even talked about the horse like he didn't exist. Wayne, we did ask about Thunder Gulch, and you had nothing to say about him. Yeah, Wayne you're the did, one Wayne that did. did Wayne you're the remember. one that ignored the horse, not us. He didn't remember he was in the race until he saw the other two weren't going to win. Then all of a sudden, he remembered he had another <laughs> one in there. I know. I love it. I mean, I'd love the. I love Wayne. I. Uh, I, I. I can't wait to have him back again. Yeah. Stable boy. How are your Kentucky Wildcats doing? They're. Uh... They're up and down, but I think by the end of the season, they'll, uh, they're, they're getting things together. We'll see. Uh, we're recording this little uh, a day early, but we'll see how they do tonight against Alabama. They look like a 12 seed to me. A 12 seed? Yeah. We'll see. All right. Wait and see. Good, co good, co good comeback. <laughs> well, you know, Stable was a little preoccupied. He's getting the uh, Abe Lincoln outfit out of storage in preparation for our next show, which will be our President's Day special. So thanks to our viewers, our great sponsor, Darby Dan Farm. We'll be back with you in two weeks. That's February 6th with a visit from Honest Stable Boy on our next And They're Off. You do not want to miss that one. 
Till then, Steve, good luck on the uh, Triple Crown. Oh, Steve, you uh, Shanghai Bobby in the Holy Bull, right? This coming yes, Saturday. exactly. I was going to say to everyone, uh, this weekend, we got the uh, three-year-old debut of the two-year-old champion, undefeated Shanghai Bobby. And listen, you got to take advantage of every undefeated horse we have on the Derby Trail because you never know what they're going to turn out to be. So let's hope we get a uh, let's see, go, hope we get a good performance. Should be a good race. We got a good undercard with another good allowance race. So. The fun's going to be starting this weekend. Yeah, and uh, he's got a lot to overcome because these Breeders' Cup horses have not been winning at a good clip coming back. So uh, good luck to yeah. uh, Starlight. Well, the Dynamic Shanghai Sky Bob. did win the Pasco Stakes coming out of the Juvenile, so maybe that's a good sign yeah. like last year. All right. Steve, we'll see you next time. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.